Hey guys, Dave from Gorilla Painting here, coming to you from my gaming table instead of my workbench this time, because um, we're going to be doing a on-camera build of the 28mm coloured scenery warehouse from Plascraft Games. I'm uh, working on a bunch of these uh, over the next uh, month and a half as I get ready for Bolt Action 2nd Edition and an event which we're going to be running at Mighty Ape. So this is the first of the Plascraft um, Bolt Action style buildings that I'm going to be working on. I chose one of the nice, uh, nice simple ones but it's got plenty of stuff going on. So um, this will give you an idea of what it's going to look like so you can take the roof off and things like that. Scan the QR code in order to be able to get access to the, the instructions, which I've got saved on a PDF on my phone as well, so I'll be pausing from time to time uh, to look at those, and then uh, restarting the video as we go ahead and get this built. So, to give you an idea of what the components look like, so on the inside it's fairly blank, um, there's not a lot going on, but on the outside it's high resolution, pre-coloured um, pre printing and they're made out of uh, kind of quite thick plastic which you can use uh, super glue on so they should go together quite nicely so these are the two end caps the wall pieces here and this punch outs for the windows the floor two roof pieces the interiors of the windows and then we have these little shutters which go on the inside as well which is a really cool way of doing it so you get multiple layers in order to build up the detail and then we've got the uh, the roof beams and stuff like that here as well so I'm going to pause the video for a sec so I can check the instructions and then we'll get stuck. So the first step is going to be working on the window details. So we just pop the centers out here them up with here just checking to see where the um, where I should have the cuts so I think it's going to look better if we keep these uh, sort of rougher cut edges into the inside because um, then they should be covered by the wall here because um, these will punch out and make the windows as well Windows separate out quite nice and easily, just with a little bit of a snap. As they did on the first lot, second lot was a little bit, a little bit trickier. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little drop of super glue on each corner of the window frame. Help speed up the process of kept the frames all together for now. A decision which I may regret if I start getting super glue on my hands, so I'll just put the first three on. And then we'll just lay down the window like so. So on the inside it's looking like that, and like this on the other side. So we get a bit of a bit of a frame and a sort of high shutter to start with and then the rest of the windows there so just going to ease it down a touch and then pop the rest of these on so I'm doing my best to keep them relatively square as I go I'm sort of lining up the top of the window just with the inside of the window ledge and helping use that as a guide This is the first of the Plascraft buildings that I've put together myself. Uh, some of the friends of mine at our local club um, have got a few of these and they do look really nice. 
on the tabletop. Um, so I'm looking forward to building a, sort of a whole village's worth. Um, and then using probably one of the new urban mats, um, cobblestone streets mats, um, to get a really sort of good European built up village, um, which we can play bolt action on. Um, so I just need to add after that some, uh, some stone walls and some, uh, some hedges and trees and stuff um, to get a good sort of dense layout on the table, um, which is always what you want for bolt action, because if there's not enough terrain, your infantry die very, very quickly. So that's the windows all in place, so we'll just snap these off at this point to get ready for the next step. So the beauty of this stuff, because you can use super glue on it, it does mean that this whole process should be nice and fast. So for these windows, we just pop out the, the centre bits here. nice big open sides like that. So then these window frames are going to glue in on the centre like so. So from the outside they'll look like this and on the inside we've got a good sort of concrete frame around it and the way it's cut is this this insert is kind of the exact size of the hole on the exterior wall so that's going to help keep everything nice and square. Again, we're just going to pop a little bit of glue in the corners. We're not using too much. And we don't want to have too much overflow coming through. And just pushing it down so it locks in place. So I used to build a lot of my terrain um, like this out of foam core, um, which was always fun. Um, it was a good way of doing it before products like this or foregrounds were on the market. Um, but these days, now that I have a kid and working full time, my sort of hobby time is at a little bit of a premium. So I'm always on the lookout for product ranges which, which look really nice, but which are also going to help speed things up um, so that I'm not spending too long having to cut out all the windows by hand and things like that so there we go we're a little bit crooked on this one so I'll just try and get that straightened up before we get much further yep it's not looking too bad So that's one of the things which uh, I like about, about these buildings is that because they're already um, sort of pre-cut, pre-painted, it means you can just whack them together, put them on the tabletop and you're good to go. But you can also spend a little bit of extra time basing them, adding some more rubble, more weathering and stuff over time. So um, that's something which I'm planning on doing both for these and for my foreground stuff as well. Um, so starting off just sort of out of box and then adding more sort of dirt and smoke weathering, more um, sort of streaking grime and, and stuff like that. Um, for my foreground stuff we'll probably be looking at adding the additional roof tiles and things over time as well. 
um, new chimneys and that sort of stuff just to uh, get the, the realism level up even higher from the base the base ones so as you can see that didn't take a huge amount of time this one on the ends is a little bit loose so we've now got our main two sides ready to go two sides built up now it's time to start working on the end so I'm gonna leave those bricks in place for now I haven't decided whether or not I'll be popping those out but I will pop the door off I'm going to have a play around to see if I can look at magnetizing it um, with a couple of magnets in here so that it can be closed or no, probably closed, not open. Um, but it looks like it's a relatively tight fit, so you should be able to just sort of slot it in there and it will stay pretty stable. So you'll see that the corner's keyed and your side is keyed as well. So you can pop them on here and they'll stay nice and straight and you've got two good sort of glue binding points. So I've got a little strip of super glue on the inside here and just wipe it off where I've got a bit too much. And we'll put another little strip along here. This is the bit where I think I do have to work relatively fast because I need to get the floor in to make sure that everything stays nice and square. So for the floor this bit's going to stick into the doorway here so I'm going to be putting the glue along these outer edges. So, and then a thin strip along the long edge. As well, apologies if I go off camera from time to time. I can't actually see uh, my screen while I'm working on this, so just bear with me as I do this. Floor's now in place. Everything's looking pretty much square. So now we can pop on the second end here. Let's take off this little strip here. in like so. Right, so we've got a few different glue areas here so there'll be glue here, here, on the inside here and then on this point here. fitting just slightly snugly in on this side. So we've got a little bit of an overlap here. Um, which tells me something's not quite square. But it should straighten out once we pop the last side in. So for this one, again, a little bit on each side. There we go floor's angling up here, so we'll need to pop that back a little bit. And a long run along the bottom. 
Obviously, if you're using a more slow drying glue, um, a PVA glue or something like that, then as you're doing this, um, you'll need to use um, some tape or rubber bands or clamps to keep everything square. That will probably give you a more plumb building in the end because you can adjust the fit as you go um, and then get everything all perfectly squared up when you sort of put this last wall piece on here. Um, however, I am going for a little bit of a speed since I'm working on live camera, so to speak. Alright, so now I'm just popping out these small sections here, which is where our, just checking what happened there, so we had just pulled a little bit of a strip off there where the cut wasn't quite even. So then these sections are going to be our beams. So if I'm not mistaken, I'm looking at something like this. So I haven't glued these in yet, I'm just slotting them in uh, with a dry fit to see uh, if this is how it's supposed to go and now I'm going to pause and check the instructions to make sure I've got it right. Yep, that is how the beams are going to sit in. But now that I'm looking at it, having a little bit of a think, these beams in an actual building would be steel for a warehouse like this um, to hold the, the weight of the quite large roof. So what I think I might do is give these a quick spray with some uh, some Army Painter plate mail to metal them up and then hit them with a little bit of um, Model Mate's rust liquid um, to get sort of a good sort of rusty finish on them and then glue them in place because currently they're just a straight up um, sort of light grey. Um, and if I give it a bit of a uh, bit of a rust finish, it is going to look really nice. And I think we're up to around 10 minutes or so on the video now, so that's probably a good point to uh, to stop things off for now um, while I get these get these painted and rusted up, and then we can pick up things in a day or two as I move ahead and uh, just finish off the roof. But as you can see, we haven't been going for very long, and we've already got the bones of a really good looking building. And I've just noticed that this window here has shifted off its axis a little bit, so I'm going to go back pop that out of the frame and get it back on square so we don't have that uh, that yellow, sorry, that uh, grey strip in there. But thanks for watching guys, I hope you're enjoying this build as a go. Uh, as I said, this is my, uh, my first time doing one of these um, sort of live on camera, um, which you guys are watching obviously after the fact. But um, yeah, I'm enjoying this, this so far, it's all coming together. The one thing which you do have on these Placecraft kits is that you do have these joins which aren't coloured, uh, which does, you lose a little bit of the finish from that. So once I've got my whole village built up, I'm going to look into what I can do just to soften off these edges. I might put some vines and stuff coming up here. Um, so just hide a little bit of the joins and stuff like that. But until next time guys, thanks for watching and happy modeling.